Welcome to A Drink of Wisdom. Nathan Drinkard, I'm Jay Wise. Thanks for spending some of your time with us. As a reminder, the show is hosted on the Anchor app. We're also on all the other big podcast platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And if you prefer the video format of the show, we are up at the A Drink of Wisdom YouTube channel. You can check us out at all those locations. Like, listen, share, subscribe. We appreciate it all. all right, Drink, what's going on, man? You know, same old, you know, what's going on over there, you know, uh, Wednesday. We back to get the streets what they need. We back to get the people what they need to hear. Um, we gonna we gonna say what they don't. We gonna see what they want. Um, it is what it is. And uh, you know, last but not least, let's talk some sports, baby. Let's roll, baby. All right, episode forty-eight. The Warriors and Pelicans split. NFL draft is complete, and we discussed last week's news about Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. We begin with the Milwaukee Bucks defeating the Brooklyn Nets last night, 124 to 118. The Bucks use an 18-1 run in the fourth quarter to turn a six-point deficit into an 11-point lead. Back-to-back -back MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo had a below-average night from the floor, but still tallied 36 points, 12 rebounds. And he got plenty of help from Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday. They each scored 23. Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving combined for 70 for the Nets, but no one else had more than 12. And the Nets were minus 16 on the boards. The Nets were without James Harden for the 15th straight game, and they've now lost three in a row. Milwaukee's won their third straight, and they closed to within a game and a half of the Nets for the second place seed in the East. Drink the Bucks also beat the Nets on Sunday, and this could be a potential playoff matchup. Do you think what we saw last night was an accurate picture of what we could see in the playoffs? I wouldn't necessarily say accurate, but I would say this. I would be concerned about James Harden. Why would I be concerned? If James Harden comes back and this hamstring injury, what it seems to me is this is a effect of the way he handled the offseason because he didn't, clearly he didn't work out or train or whatever during the offseason like normal. We seen how he showed up to camp. We seen how he showed up to the season. And I feel like his body's starting to let him know you you didn't do right and now you 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 you're paying the price for it. Um now when he comes back will he make a difference? I don't know. Cuz the their problem didn't have nothing to do with James Harden. They didn't struggle to score. They didn't struggle to make plays. They didn't struggle to move the ball like these are the things we think of James Harden. They didn't struggle to shoot free throws. They didn't they struggle to rebound. They struggle to show size. They struggle with one-on-one -on -one defense. Dude, let me tell you how disrespectful the Nets was in this game. Let me tell you. Time after time, I seen them literally try to guard um, Giannis with DeAndre Jordan. What is this, 2012? 2013? What, what am I missing here? So, DeAndre Jordan can guard. Not only can he not guard Giannis, then you going to get disrespectful and do it one-on-one. -on -one. You ain't even going to bring no weak side help. You going to do... All right, cool. So, if that's the strategy, then we see how, how long this series going to be. But, to your point, I don't think it's a direct, you know, reflection of what we're going to see if they meet again. Some stuff can change. But I do think it's a large sample size of what we could see. Um, because at the end of the day, the Bucks still going to rebound. And the, and the, and the Nets going to have to figure out how to rebound. At the end of the day, that's just what it is. And we're talking about these two teams. We're going to add in Philly. We're going to add it. Listen, the Nets, they are in trouble. They're in trouble, but it's not like, oh, sell the form. The roof is on fire. But this is a problem. This is a problem. Because James Harden can't fix this. I don't care how good, how elite those three guys is. You're telling me right now, if it if they have an off night, it's an automatic L. That's what you're telling me right now. If they don't make shots, it is an automatic L. How else are you going to win if they don't make shots? If your three guys don't make shots? I would love to know what's your plan B? What's your plan C? Because I don't think they got one. And that's what I've seen in these two games against Milwaukee. Because... Giannis been going off, but his his road dogs they might might may or might come might not come, you know what I'm saying? And they still win the game. They have a plan B. 
Giannis, okay, hey, Giannis, we're going to turn you more into a passer. Hey, Drew, we want to put you right here. Middleton, we want to put you right here. Oh, you know what? We still got a pretty decent bench, too. Bring the bench in if the starting lineup ain't getting it together. You know, they have a plan B. I'm sorry, but I, I watched the Nets last night. I don't know if they got a plan B. Did Kevin Durant played 40 minutes last night. Kyrie Irving played 39. Give me your two stars. So if you got to push them for doggone pretty much 40 minutes apiece and you still lose the game, I don't know. Maybe you was working out and you wanted some extra, you know, PTN. I don't know. But from what I seen last night, what I seen last night, it is a cause for concern. And what my ears heard from the Bucks' performance in the last two games against the Nets is they was telling them, <laughs> if you want to not get, you know, dismissing six games or possibly five, y'all might want to bring James Harden and bring in some stilts because um, we're going to bring this to you the whole series. That's just what it is. We're going to bring this. We're going to be in DeAndre Jordan face the whole series. Blake Griffin, whoever else you want to bring in there, they're going to get this work. So y'all might want to be ready. So I think this game showed some of the negative um, aspects of the Nets. The lack of defense, the lack of size. This is exactly what the Bucks showed. And for the for the record, I want to say this before I hand it over to you. I think this top three in the East is just so much more interesting than what's going on in the West. I'm sorry. Don't beat me up. I know I'm a Lakers fan, LeBron, you know, all that got it. But the East is – I'm starting to be like, hey, bro, let's just do two East games every game. Like, it's just I'm, I'm getting very intrigued with what they got going on over there. Um, not to say that, that the Eastern Conference is better than the Western Conference. I'm not saying that by no means. But I will say they're painting a better story than the Western Conference is right now. Um, so, yeah, I, w- I would say my, my, my final answer is it is not a 100% accurate picture. But if I put a percentage on it, I'm looking at about at least 75. Because I, I, I can definitely see the Bucks doing the same exact thing in the postseason. And... I can see the Nets not having James Harden in the postseason. I can. So, with that said, yeah, I give about sixty percent. We'll see when when these, these if these two teams come around to play each other again. We'll see. But I think it's about a, a 75 percent chance that what we see is pretty accurate. I wanna, yeah, I just want to start where you left off because I thought it was pretty interesting. The East West thing, and we we've said all along we still think the West is better than the East. But the East is the East is more interesting right now. And it's right from the top, that three that three team race in the East with those top three teams who are, you know, by they're completely separate themselves from the rest of the Eastern Conference. And Milwaukee's made a little push here to make things interesting for that second seed now. But even you, you look on further down the line, like the Knicks, with how great they've been playing lately, they're a story. Trey Young and the Hawks and what they've been doing. Um, under the leadership of Nate McMillan. That's been something worth watching. Can't forget about Miami, you know, the defending East Conference champions. You know, they the Hornets. They've stepped up. Yeah, the Hornets have been in there. We, we, we've been talking about Boston all year, like, you know, which Boston are we going to get? Even, I mean, even the Wizards are trying to inject themselves in the conversation. They've slid up to the 10th seed. You know, they've won, what, eight of their last 10. And then you look over in the West, like the teams that we just, you know, we think – will be there in the end or just like the Lakers, can they get healthy? They've dropped all the way down to six seed. The, the Clippers, you know, they've been you know, a little bit up and down, but they've been like, for, for the longest time, they've been, you know, the third seed or lower. Um, you know, Phoenix and Utah, you know, we see them teams, we got respect for them. But in the end, like, I don't, I don't you know, even to this moment, even with the Lakers health questions, I still don't see either team getting past the second round. And I surely don't see a Suns Jazz Western Conference Finals. I don't think that's what we're going to see. <laughs> the most, to me, the most interesting thing out west is Steph Curry right now. But we'll get to that later. Uh, you know, I think some of this, what we're seeing between these two teams, is definitely something you can translate. You can translate into a playoff series. Not everything completely, but obviously, if you're Brooklyn, there should be some level of concern. They're not, they're tied for their longest losing streak they've had this season at three games. You know, in, in the end, the problem with Brooklyn is, and you see this with like teams who are slapped together from time to time, you know, and they seem to like out talent somebody. 
you know, it doesn't always work immediately. And this, I think this is a talent, a, th a, a three pronged talent that we've never seen before. It goes above what uh, LeBron had in Miami with D Wade and Bosch. It, it goes above the Boston Celtics big three. And, you know, you can name, pro pro there's probably some other ones we could, you know, throw in there. Well, what, do, does this go above Golden State with the Splash Brothers, KD and Draymond? I think, I think it does. I think it does. I think it does right now, especially, especially, off, especially offensively. Um, but, you know, the, the Warriors, I mean, they already, they already had Steph and Clay and Draymond, you know, cooking together for a while. Then they added in KD, who is, you know, one of the most unselfish superstars that you can throw in. You know, he's a guy that can just fit in. Remember, you remember at the time when he came over, it was like, you know, I like the way they play. You know, the ball, the ball just moves constantly. It just moves, yeah. 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 So, you know, this is a little bit different because Kyrie and KD came over last season, but KD didn't play uh, due to, the, you know, the Achilles. Kyrie, you know, he didn't play a whole lot. He was out much of the you know second half or whatever. He, he wasn't in the bubble, you know, all that thing. And then you, now you insert James Harden. So they don't, they don't have a lot of continuity right now. They've only played, those three guys have only played seven times all year. And James Harden's been out for about a month now. So gotta be, that's gotta be concerning in itself. But I mean, even, even without James Harden, KD and Kyrie Irving should be able to still put you in contention. But the problems they have, you know, on the boards and on defense, they don't, you know, they're going to have to outscore people. And the problem that I have with that is, and it goes back to Steve Nash and Mike D'Antoni and the Phoenix Suns of, you know, a decade ago, they kind of a little bit, I don't think they play as fast and as, and as frantic of a pace, but neither team defends, you know, and they, they, they struggle, they appear to struggle on the glass. So I, I don't know how far it's going to, and it gets teams like this because Milwaukee, Milwaukee with a Drew Holiday, with a Giannis, we know Middleton can play both ends. Lopez is a factor. Uh, now you got PJ Tucker, who you talked about a little earlier before the show, you know, that, you know, we talked about it when they acquire PJ Tucker, that could be a little X factor missing piece, give you some toughness. We talked about, you know, last year, Milwaukee doesn't have that, that energy, that dog guy, you know, that you need that Marcus Smart, the Jay Crowder, right. those type of guys right. didn't have right. that. Now they have him and Milwaukee's benefited from being under the radar. They, they, they have a little, they're, they're a little bit similar to Philly. Um, you know, you, you look at Milwaukee and Philly right now, as opposed to Brooklyn, Brooklyn looks like they have more talent. You know, if you had to pick three players that you would start with, you take KD, you take Harden, you take Kyrie before you would take uh, the trio of Giannis, Middleton, and Holiday. And the same, the same thing, by the way, for Philly. Embiid, Harris, and uh, Simmons, you would take Brooklyn's three. But after that, you know, you go, you go down the depth chart and the benches, it gets a little bit more even. You know, and some some of that probably flips in the favor of Philly and Milwaukee, and Milwaukee and Milwaukee and Philly. We know how we know how good Philly defends. Milwaukee me, can def, Milwaukee can defend probably not as well as Philadelphia, but they're more capable of playing better, good defense than Brooklyn is. Now, now let me ask you this: you you pointed out the the big three, and I agree. Neither neither of the other two teams got a big three, but what about the other two starters? Because then I think if you look at it like that, you're right, the big three. I think the other two teams have yeah. a better starting five. And that's because. And yeah, yeah, and that's what I meant, for, you know, as far as you get to the depth, you get to the benches. Okay. Yeah, when you talk about, you know, what is it, Joe Harris and DeAndre Jordan versus Brooke Lopez and DiVincenzo, you know, that's probably, that, that may be a little bit of a toss up. I, I, take, yeah. I would take yeah. Brooke Lopez over Jordan. I, I take Joe Harris over DiVincenzo probably. And then Philadelphia with what they're doing. We're not even doing Philadelphia tonight. We're talking a lot about who are there are those. <laughs> Help me out. I'm, I'm um, escaping. So there's the starting lineup, I think. Oh, it's is, uh, it's uh, Seth Curry Danny, and Danny Green, and Danny right? Danny Green. Okay, yeah. yeah. Steph Curry, so Danny Green. You talk about yeah. You talk about Seth Curry and Danny Green as opposed to Joe Harris and DeAndre Jordan. That's they're they're both toss up. But you you keep going down the line, and you talk about things like defense. And when you talk about Milwaukee, when you can throw in a PJ Tucker, you talk about Philly, you can throw in a, a Matisse Thibault, a Shake Milton, 
you know, you get to, you know, you, you're talking about Brooklyn right now. You're talking about some of their depth. And it's just, I mean, what is some of this? Who is Mike? Blake, what is Blake Griffin? <laughs> yeah, Blake Griffin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Blake Griffin. That's right. Blake Griffin. <laughs> Blake Griffin, Bruce Brown, Mike James, <laughs> and, La- and Landry Shamit. I, it's just, it looks. You hate it to see appears, it. You hate it to appear, see it. It appears that, yeah. Brooklyn needs, they need all their stars to be operating at, you know, the, as efficient as they can. And if the one thing about James Harden too, is, you know, Brooklyn, obviously they can still win and they can still, you know, outscore you because KD and Kyrie are still that, you know, deadly offensively, but Harden made things easier because, you know, he comes in and he, you know, he allows Kyrie to just, you know, be a two guard. He doesn't, he can just focus on scoring and Harden can be the guy to get everybody involved, create open looks for everybody. That is where I think Harden has made the biggest difference, you know, because Brooklyn obviously has all the talent in the world offensively, but it takes them a little more from a, having a little ISO feel to him. So now James Harden gets the ball moving a little bit better, but you know, the, the rebounding and the defense that Milwaukee, you know, has, has shown, it's gonna. I think it's gonna be tough. I think it's gonna be tough for Brooklyn in a series. But the wild card, I guess, before you know we look at it, is is James Harden gonna be healthy? That's gonna be the, the biggest question moving forward. 